Happy Writing Glimmers, Nano23, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Sitting Down with Soul Writer. My name is Jenna O'Malley. I am your Soul Writer, author of Sci Fi Fantasy with Dashes of Romance and Nerdy References. Alongside the raw stories my characters weave throughout time and space, I help other creative minds get back to their Phoenix mode, no matter what life throws their way. So let's go ahead today and check out the main topic of the video, along with. The glimmer that I've been waiting to share for several days at this point. So, what are five things I wish I knew about Kickstarter before I actually did my first one? And let's look at a successful Kickstarter, shall we? QWERTY! Eee, so excited! Adventure awaits indeed. <laughs> So I think all of you kind of want me to do the unboxing that was started before I even received it. Yeah, whoever our um, UPS person is or USPS person is that handles our packages, we've been getting a lot of damaged packages lately and we're not happy. No, I did not pre-peak. So it came like that, unfortunately. It's out of Cordy's hands. Um, but um it was in the delivery company's hands for that misfire i think so i'm gonna hope nothing fell out and let's go ahead and take a look at all of the items they're in it did make it easier for me to open thank goodness though and oh my goodness it looks so pretty already because well not only is the outside decorated in one of my favorite colors the inside has my number one favorite color <laughs> so let's go ahead and see Ba -da -da. Oh, it's tightly packed. Da -da -da. Oh no. Do I get to make the chest unlock noise? La -da. Ooh, and stuff did fall. I'm gonna make sure I did empty. Yes. What fell out? Oh, stickers. Yeah, really cool stickers. So I do have some more awesome stickers here, first of all. These were part of the Kickstarter swag. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Eee! So these are some of the things that QWERTY had as swag for the Kickstarter, and they're really good choices. I'm kind of wishing I had done holographic stickers now, too. Now for the part that looks really pretty because it's purple. Oh, it's a pretty purple. Oh, so pretty. Okay. So we have little tissue paper ASMR for everybody. Whoop. Did a really good job with all this. A okay. The one thing I was afraid I was going to lose was this. I was afraid that would have fallen out with the rip on the box. That's so cool. So this is the Humane Society for Creatures and Cryptids. The Lambros family. That is so cool. That is so cool. And um, I think I recognize the thank you sticker. I think I have a set of them in that case of stuff over there. Because good choice. Take off the bubble wrap, which is even purple. I did not realize that it was even purple. OMG, purple bubble wrap. Cute. Come on. You're giving me ideas now for my next one. That's amazing. I it, it they're heart shaped. I kid you not. And yes, for the ASMR people who need a couple pops. And in three, two, if you don't want to hear a bunch of crackling, mute. Now, one. 
Okay, thank you. That was therapeutic, actually. I kid you not, I'm one of those people. Woo! Bookmark, bookmark. Really pretty one, too. Oh, the character art. I think there's stickers of each of these. Correct me if I'm wrong, Stephanie. There were stickers, and we got to pick one as part of our levels. Mind you, it's been a couple months. Oh, wow. <gasps> That's so pretty. And nice touch. Nice touch. Yes. Oh, my gosh. This is so pretty. I'm going to try and preserve the wax seal. Yay. Preserved. Ba -da 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 wow. This is a nice touch. Cute. Oh, cute. Cute. I'm not going to read it out loud, but thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, for everything you do in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go subscribe. If you don't follow, you need to. And OMG. Do not trust the sisters in the woods. Oh, so pretty. Uh, that's so pretty. Before we get to La Piste de Resistance, the reason why the Kickstarter doth exist. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our Lambros family gem, I am sure love the way you took the care to package this oh oh and it's a nice chunky book too so there's the back does everyone want to see the front wow that is so awesome i adore this cover so i'm gonna go ahead and read the back at ya. <clears throat> at ya. The Lambros family has never fit in with the town of Pandora, even from the very beginning. Since their ancestors immigrated from Greece with magical powers in tow, the townsfolk have never trusted them, and that hasn't changed in the century since. Now, I'm gonna probably say this wrong, I'm sorry, Quarty. Melopony, Calliope, and Thalia struggle to live their everyday lives. When the new girl, Asha Singh, moves to town, everything changes. Thalia, once determined to escape Pandora upon graduation, finds herself growing ever closer to the heiress of the new resort in town and puts her plans on hold as their relationship develops. Watch <sighs> All the while, a man has entered the ground, sent by their mother to help prepare the newest creature en route to the house. Uh-oh. His intentions come into question as he tries to befriend the distrustful Calliope, whose own abilities with the animals seem something out of a fairy tale. With their mother missing, oh my goodness, mom, struggles to keep the house together amidst the change in the town, the newcomers to their lives, and the impending threat of their secret life being exposed to the community and the world. As the three sisters deal with their own personal problems, the divide between them grows wide when they need to band together. The most, or else it may be with one of them in the hands of the greatest enemy. Oh my God. Eek. Okay, I see why, I, I see, I see why Chonky Book. I love the spacing. My eyes are gonna thank you when I'm reading this as a break from fine text on a computer screen for sure. Thank you. So I'm looking forward to going through a proper reread of some of, or all of. <laughs> so if you want to go ahead and continue to support all the epic things that QWERTY does here around the author tubes, the writing community, and more, do go ahead and check out the link in the description box below. I know this is running a little long and some of you are like, Jenna, I love seeing another example. If you want to see more, my 
dear friend Angela Hester Books is getting ready to launch Book C for her Alphabet Children's Book Series. So if you want an example of how to use this in different genres, that would be your ticket too. On the other hand, I did promise you five things I wish I knew beforehand. Other than having amazing examples, I'm going to tell you some places where to find those examples and to get you on your path to kickstarting the right way. Number one, there is a Kickstarter best practices for fiction writers course that is free that I highly suggest you take by Lauren L. Coleman and Dean Wesley Smith. I have linked it in the description box below. This is where I started with building my Kickstarter at the very beginning. I wish I had taken more than a week or two to go over the content of the course. I wish I had spent way more time with it. And now there's been a couple of updates since I've looked at it last. So it is one of those sources that's worth going back and looking at even in between Kickstarters. If you have done a Kickstarter before and you've never taken the class, or if it's been a while, I would go back and just check it as an update. Number two, get your book selling on Kickstarter by Russell P. Nolte and Monica Linnell is an amazing book. Again, linked below. I am in the process of rereading parts or large sections of this book, basically. So it is a huge help. I know there are other people who have done Kickstarters that have put out their own books about Kickstarter and even on Kickstarter. I just, you know, like they use Kickstarter to get this book about making books on Kickstarter started and they're really good. I just haven't had a chance to read all of them into the depth that I have with Russell and Monica's book. So I highly suggest that you double check the content in there. Look through, even if, again, you, whether or not you've done one in the past, compare it against your idea. See if it'll help you clarify your ideas or maybe come about an even better one than before. To complement both of these sources, I would have to say another fine direction to go, especially if you enjoy participating in Facebook groups, is number three, the Kickstarter for Authors Facebook group. This is not just a place to find people to back you. That's not its purpose. This is a place for you to properly learn Kickstarter as far as collaboratively thinking, okay? They have so many resources of like drop shipping methods or different company ideas that do different things outside of the US. So if you are uh, UK, or if you're in another part of the world and you are like, how do I do this thing? This would be a really good group to go and meet up with other people in your country, even who may be trying to figure out the logistics of making the thing happen as far as actually like printing swag and getting things shipped to people goes. So I Again, linked below, you're going to be checking a lot of links, I think, this time around, but it's a huge help. I think having those three sources alone, if I had gotten all of them six months before I had done my first Kickstarter and thoroughly studied them, I probably, because I found them along the way of making my first Kickstarter, they, I kind of put the cart and the horse side by side, if you get what I mean. And they tell that old saying of don't put the cart in front of the horse. It doesn't work if you put them side by side sometimes either. Number four, the importance of building an audience early on is part of the reason why I am teasing things out so much sooner for this Kickstarter, just to see what happens. I think I had only done a couple of months maybe two months teasing it out hardcore before I launched it. And of course it was my sandbox mode. I was okay keeping it a little bit on the smaller side. That's all right, that's fine. But now I wanna see what I can do to expand where I started. So yes, appropriately so. I'm trying to build that audience by example, by going over some of this with you. So keep an eye out. I will be dropping links as soon as I have the preview links for you to go ahead and push that notify me when it goes live button and so on and so forth. But we need to get to number five. There's an importance of stretch goals in mind and leaving room to kind of gear towards those increases by leveling out your swag 
items, but also this allows you the chance to build towards making sure that you have enough to cover all your costs. What does that mean? One, I didn't properly plan my swag as far as doing bonus levels, what we call stretch goals for Kickstarter scale. This time around, Suntroa of uh, Jeremy Green of Suntroa Arts, my character sketch artist, and I are doing a coloring book. I'm doing releases of the side quest novels in different formats. Those are, you know, side stories, uh, collections of short stories that don't exactly fit into the main quest line, and more stickers of all different kinds. Um, I actually have contacted a vendor who would do like crystals, essential oils, things of that nature that have character sketch art on them and kind of like a, you can collect a character card with these items. I would love to help people who are looking to do Kickstarters to get together and maybe talk about their planning sessions, or even maybe if you did one and it failed, what you would like to do to change it. So let's go ahead and get together and maybe we'll plan a little session collaboratively. I would really like to start doing more things like that for topics on this nature. So speaking of a little bit of a teaser ahead, I am as part of the Writing Glimmers challenge looking to plan something that's going to come about maybe not this quarter but in the new year it's a um what i learned about writing from watching blank or from playing blank kind of videos and i'm collaborating with a few fellow writers here in the author tube space to share those bits of advice and journey along the way so I think one of the first topics we're tackling is five things anime taught me about writing. So if you want to go ahead and join us, that's coming sometime in December or January, I think at this point. So I have proper time to collaborate with it because, well, tis NaNoWriMo, tis it not. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. And as far as today's writing glimmer from me goes, in book one, we have... Andy being told that she's using too much aggro. In book two, the line cycles back around. Instead of Andy being told, hey, don't pull too much aggro with her magical character, Micah is told he's not pulling enough. Oh boy, what a line reversal. That's me and humor, I guess. And that's kind of what is part of a writing glimmer for me. I enjoy. I'm like, whose line is it anyway? If I can make it a cyclical joke and bring it full circle a couple of times across a few books for the readers who pay attention, I'm gonna. Because <laughs> I love that as a reader. It's like, you know, five books in, you get a joke that connects all the way back to the first book. I love stuff like that. And if it's if it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, it's just normal dialogue. You see what I mean? Those little hidden Easter egg kind of humorous jokes that makes the reader stop and giggle or snort or whatever. Don't drink stuff that would burn your nose when you read my books. You might snort it out your nose, I'm told. I don't mean to cause you that pain, but I enjoy writing humor, I guess, more than I realize. So that's my writing glimmer for the day. Let's go ahead and check the next one. Thank you all for being here. Take care of yourself. You've always been worth it. Bye. <laughs>